So let's take a look at how Warshall's algorithm works in practice on a very small special case, namely this relation on the set 0, 1, 2 that has these edges from 0 to 1, 1 to 0, and 0 to 2. The transitive closure of this relation would include these three edges plus three more. First, there's one from 1 to 2, since we already have an edge from 1 to 0 and then from 0 to 2. Secondly, we would also have to have a loop on 0, since there's an edge from 0 to 1 and then 1 back to 0, and therefore transitivity would say we would need an edge from 0 to 0. Likewise, we would have to have a loop from 1 to itself. So the transitive closure would have these six edges in it. Now in the code for Warshall's algorithm, we're going to start by inputting the adjacency matrix for the original relation and copying that into a variable w. So here's the beginning state for w. This is a 3x3 three three matrix with the first row and column corresponding to node 0, the second one corresponding to node 1, and the third corresponding to node 2. Here's the first row of the matrix, there is the second row, and here is the third row. Now, what Warshall's algorithm does is add ones into this matrix corresponding to the new edges that we have to add. In this case, we know we are going to eventually have to flip the entries in the 0, 0 position, the 1, 1 position, and the 1, 2 position, because that's where the edges are going to go. So we're going to step through Warshall's algorithm line by line here to see how it manipulates the entries of this matrix. Remember that Warshall's algorithm consists of a triple for loop that loops through k, then i, then j, in this case from 0 to 2. Now every time we loop, iterate through one of these loops, the algorithm looks at the ij entry of the matrix, then the ik entry of the matrix, and then the kj entry of the matrix. And remember, the ij entry of the matrix is set equal to 1 if one of the two conditions is satisfied. Either the ij entry was already equal to 1, which corresponds to an edge already being there, or if both the ik and kj entries are equal to 1. In terms of basic logic, what we're going to do is compute wik and wkj and then join them with the logical AND operator and then take the result and join that with wij using the logical OR operator. And remember that because of this calculation, once the ij entry of w is set equal to 1, it will always be equal to 1 even in subsequent iterations of the loop. Let's make a note about time complexity here. Since k, i, and j, in this case, all go from 0 to 2, then in all, Warshall's algorithm, algorithm is going to run through 27 iterations of all the loops here. Warshall's algorithm, in other words, is an O n cubed algorithm, where n is the number of rows and columns of the matrix. We're just going to go through the first 10 steps of the algorithm in, in this video. So let's start with the first iteration of the outer k loop. Here, k is going to be set equal to 0, i is going to be set equal to 0, and j is going to range from 0 to 2. Now, note that in the wij in column in this table, that's just going to be the first row of the matrix. In the first line of the table, here every variable is set equal to 0, and so all the w entries are referring to the 0, 0 entry in the upper left corner of the matrix, and those are all 0. So when we look at wik and wkj and join them with an and, that's 0 and 0, which comes out to 0. And then we're going to join that with using the OR operator with the 0 that's in the wij entry, and that result finally gives us a 0. In the next line, we're going to have a 1 in the wij uh, entry, so no matter what the outcomes of wik and wkj are, we're going to end up with a 1 in the result. But just to be thorough, here wik is w00, the 00, 00 entry of the matrix, that is equal to 0, and wkj is the w01 entry, which is a 1. So the result is the AND of the second two bits, joined together by OR with the first bit, and that result gives us a 1. That one was already in the matrix, and it's going to stay there for the rest of the algorithm. Now, something similar happens in the third line of the table. WIJ here is W02, that's the 0, 02 entry of the matrix, and that's a 1. WIK is W00, and that is a 0. And WKJ is W02, which is a 1. The second column and the third column ANDed together, joined by OR with the first column, is going to give us a 1. That completes the first run all the way through the innermost loop. Now we're going to increment I to 1 and start over. 
In the fourth line of the table, WIJ is W10. That's the second row first column, which is a 1. Once again, because this bit is a 1, and we're going to be joining it with everything else using an OR operation, we're going to get 1 as the result. But just for the sake of completeness, WIK in this case is W10, the 10 zero entry of the matrix, and that is a 1. And WKJ is W00, which is a 0. So in end, the end result is a 1. Now, something interesting is going to happen in the fifth line of this table. At this point, k is equal to 0, i is equal to 1, and j is equal to 1. Now, the wij entry, that's the 1, 1 entry of the matrix. That's the middle of the matrix. And notice that entry is a 0 currently. But also note that this is one of the bits that we're supposed to end up flipping. The wik entry in this case is w10, the 1, 0 entry of the matrix. That's the second row, first column, and that is a 1. That 1 represents the edge that goes from node 1 to node 0. And the WKJ entry is W01, which is also a 1. And that represents the edge that goes from node 0 back to node 1. Now, the algorithm says to join with AND the WIK and WKJ bits, which in this case is a 1 AND 1. The result is a 1. And then when we OR that with the WIJ entry, it's still 1. So the algorithm now flips the bit in the 1, 1 entry to a 1, which is what we said would need to happen. Throughout the rest of the algorithm, this bit is going to stay locked in at 1. Moving on to the next line, we look at the 1, 2 entry, which is the second row, third column. That entry is a 0. But the WIK entry, that's W1, 0. That's the second row, first column. That's a 1 again. And the WKJ entry is W0, 2, which is also a 1. So again, using the logical operations in the algorithm, we join the WIK and WKJ bits with AND, and that produces a 1. And then joining this with the WIJ entry using OR keeps it at 1, and so the final result is 1. This gets us our edge from node 1 to node 2 because we have an edge from 1 to 0, and that was reflected in the W10 entry, and another edge from 0 to 2, which we saw in the W02 entry. This gets us our flipped bit in the 1, 2 entry, which we wanted. That completes another iteration of the innermost loop and the second iteration of that middle loop. Now we're going to keep k at 0 and increment i to 2 and loop all the way through j again. This time not much happens. If i is fixed at 2, then we're looking at the entries in the bottom row of the matrix, and those are all zeros. And so the wik entries are all w020, which is a 0. So it doesn't matter what the WKJs are. We are anding them with a zero the whole way across this table and then joining it with another zero. So the result for this entire run of the loop is going to be nothing but zeros. That gets us to one complete iteration through the middle loop. Now we're going to increment J finally to a one and start over with I at zero and J at zero. So in this case, WIJ is W00, that's the upper left entry of the matrix, which is a 0. WIK is W01, which is a 1. And WKJ is W10, which is also a 1. Now notice this is telling us that although there is not an edge from 0 to itself, there is an edge from 0 to 1 and an edge from 1 to 0. So here, using the logical operations of the algorithm, we're going to get a 1 as the final result. And that new 1 represents the loop at 0, 0 that we didn't originally have but said that we needed. So that's the last run through the algorithm that we're going to do in this video. There are 17 more steps to run through if you choose to do that, and you will find that no more bits are changed because all the bits that needed to be won have already been flipped and there are no more links amongst the nodes that's going to be discovered through this algorithm. So that concludes this video on Warshaw's algorithm. Thanks for watching.